And thanks for joining us on Off the Press on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We will be checking out the pages and find out what's making the rounds. We do have Chris Wandu on standby. Good morning, Chris, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. 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 All right, so uh, I start off with the Daily Trust newspaper this morning, and uh, we're looking at the bold caption on the Daily Trust newspaper. It reads, Troops kill 50 ESWAP fighters in Bornu. Uh, you have riders underneath the bold caption. As bandit execute 15 persons in Sokoto, attack Zamfara village for failing to pay levy. All of that uh, on the bold caption. Lekki Tollgate panel says 11 dead. It is cheaper to transport container from China to Lagos than Lagos to Kanu. That's also another caption you find this morning. And Buhari approves fresh 656.1 billion naira bailout for states as governors meet over Peri club reform. That's a rider on the needs. Oh, we check out one or two uh, before we move away. Ohanese wants autonomous region. Nigeria on alert as Iranian cyber spies target telecoms and ISPs. That's the much we can take on the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. All right, and on the um, Punch newspapers, Asu threatens fresh strike, says agreed 22 billion naira allowance unpaid. Earned allowance, not that of an associ uh, association, says the education minister. And it says also hold government responsible if we go on another strike. Insurance firms rake in 2.1 trillion naira premium in five years, says a report. And also NSARS, nine confirmed dead at Lekito Gate, says Lagos panel, says the army likely used live bullets on protesters. Um, four banks borrow $6.2 billion from foreign market amid dollar shortage. Still on the punch, Namdekanu fighting for us, not himself, must be released, says Mbaka. And ECOE building engineers unveil preliminary report, suspect, uh, suspect structural distress and others. Federal government orders probe as Nigerian wrongly jailed in Cote d'Ivoire dies in prison. Bandits want education and facilities for children to drop arms, says Gumi. Outrage greets Oshun lawmakers' uh, Semovita empowerment campaign for Adelike. Those are the big ones on the punch uh, this morning. All right, let's move away from the punch newspaper this morning and check out The Guardian. Bold caption reads, inflation decelerates, defies market reality. Uh, that's what you find. And the writer says, figures contradict global trend. Worst days ahead, farmers warn, and address insecurity to save situation. Federal government advised. Figures doctored to achieve predetermined objectives. Fana who's saying all of that on the Guardian newspaper this morning. And COVID-19, federal government reinstates December 1st deadline for workers to vaccinate. Government gets three weeks to meet ASU demands. Boko Haram seizes Shiroro and Rafi local government areas in Niger. And local airlines order 16 new aircraft at $1.2 billion at Dubai Air Show. And just before we move away from the Guardian newspaper, we quickly check out this saying, it's difficult to be impartial, objective without autonomy, the Chief Justice of Nigeria tells Buhari. Very and interesting. And the leadership newspapers, uh, Rising Hardship, ACF, Ohaneze, Afen Ferrer and others advise federal government on way out. One creative thinkers in cabinet, poverty, unemployment worse in the north, says Jega. As to give federal government three week ultimatum to meet unions' demands. And also bandits ready to lay down arms, says Gumi. We can also find here states battle 300 billion naira pension liabilities. And um, judiciary's timely intervention saved democracy from collapse, says the CJN. Uh, we can also find here federal government warns against procurement of COVID-19 vaccination cards. Those are the uh, stories that we have time for this morning. Uh, Chris Wandu, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning to you. Uh, Mr. Wandu, can you hear us clearly? I can hear you loud and clear. All right. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, where would you like to start from? 
of course, obviously, it has to be from Lekki, uh, the part of the panel from um, Lekki. Um, and um, some of us are not surprised by the outcome of that report, um, especially it has put paid to most of the allegations leveled at against uh, security agencies and uh, that uh, people lost their lives, which have been vehemently uh, uh, opposed to or defended to by the federal government, especially the Minister of um, Information, uh, Lai Mohammed, who was uh, threatening Brimstone and uh, whatever, uh, and throwing that at everybody that uh, said that uh, there was um, there were dead at that um, uh, incident. And uh, he took it to a more ridiculous height when he threatened um, international um, TV organizations like um, uh, CNN, whom he threatened to um, to sue and, um, and and the rest. But good enough, uh, I will give kudos to that committee, uh, that panel, for doing a very fantastic job uh, with the report that they submitted to the uh, Lagos State government yesterday. Yes, nine or is it eleven? Uh, people were confirmed dead, so many missing. And um, also the uh, report from the pathologist um, who also carried out, um, who also mentioned that over 90 um, corpses were recovered within the period, but cannot be situated to the issue that happened at Lake Bet. Um, the Lagos State Governor also said that he's going to set up a, a four man committee uh, to come out with a white uh, paper report on the on the, so we wait for that. But the most important thing for me is there that it has been confirmed, and that most of us have been saying time and time again that people died at Lake uh, Togate. I'm waiting for the Minister of uh, Information and National Retention, Lai Mohammed, to see his reaction. What we say now that the report has come out. This is a, 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 a panel set up by a government, not individual. He took he practically took the human rights organizations, NGOs, journalists, and everybody that. Uh, spoke about that uh, incident and um, tried to paint everybody with one brush, um, saying that uh, they are just uh, saying things that we are not um, tenable and that cannot substantiate it. But the evidence is clear and the report is in. Right, Let's Mr. wait Mr. Mr. Wando. Going to say, uh, now. Mr. Wando, I, I want you to also react to two um, aspects. The first one is it says here it was alleged and corroborated that soldiers picked bullets. Uh, bullet shells, rather, on the 9th of October 20th, and policemen uh, followed up in the morning of October 21st to pick up bullet shells. It says several unidentified bodies were moved by security agencies and the Lagos State Environmental Health Mon Monitoring Unit and deposited at various mortuaries in Lagos. It says three trucks with brushes underneath were brought to the Lekki toll gate in the morning to clean up the, the scene of blood stains and other evidence. Um, so let's start with your thoughts on, on you know, those aspects first. Uh, those, those are perfect evidence. And um, that brings to question the, uh, the involvement of um, uh, the toll gate operators. Don't forget that the camera was shut off and the lights were also shut off. Shut off. And that is where the whole thing starts. So for me, the, 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 the operators of that toll gate are very, very culpable. And I want to see more sanction on that. Uh, Everybody that has been recommended or has been fingered to be part to have been part of that it must be brought to book and made to account for their sins, quote and unquote, um, because it was a deliberate attempt by state security agencies to be able to to stifle um, uh, that protest that went on for days without any rancor, without any disturbances, and, and don't forget that the effect of that shoot that was what led to the various destruction of several. Uh, properties within uh, within Lagos State, all the non-reality buses that were um, destroyed, police stations, and the rest of them. So uh, the, the 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 report was so very. And when you look at members of that panel, which included Ebade uh, uh and uh, Sega and so many of them, they did a very very solid job. At a point, I just felt that I was thinking that that report was going to sit uh, swept under the carpet. That why is it taking so long? Uh, to come out with that report. But when I finally saw it yesterday and read it, I was very, very touched. But that is, as I, I, I said earlier, and that is not where it stopped. The, that is just the beginning. Now we have to start holding people that were responsible, accountable for all the acts in, uh, on, uh, on, on being involved in that NSAS um, saga. And the families of those that were accused were compensated. But the most important thing for me, everybody that I had a hand 
in that killing, in that shooting, and all the uh, unwholesome um, activities that happened at the target on that day should be brought to be prosecuted and jailed as a deterrent for, uh, for others who may want to plan such in the future. All right, Chris Wandu, let's share your thoughts on uh, the headline that made it to the Guardian newspaper this morning. It's difficult to be impartial, objective, without autonomy. That's what the Chief Justice of Nigeria is telling the President. Well, um, the Chief Judge, yeah, you may be right to say a large extent, but our Constitution is very, very clear on the division on separation of power. Um, we have the executive, the judiciary, and the uh, and the legislature, and it has been spelled out in the uh, Nigerian Constitution, 1999 Constitution, as amended, giving each um, arm of government um, some kind of autonomy. So nobody can tell us that your hand were tied to the back in order not to be able to perform our achieve. Yes, there have been some challenges. There have been, there have been executive interferences here and there. Uh, but the judiciary itself should also look inward because they are also part of the problem. Most of the judges that we have presently, have they been as, um, as upright and uh, outstanding as they're supposed to be? Are here in law, we say who, who comes to equity comes with clean hands. Have most of them come with clean hands. Just of recently, we saw a, a magistrate of, the, uh, 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 of a court in Abuja issuing a search warrant at the, uh, at the residence of a, 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 the second highest ranking a justice of the Supreme Court. That is supreme. That is a judiciary to judiciary, and there have been so many instances. We are also judiciary officers, especially uh, 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 at the bench, have been uh, indicted in corruption and rest of them. But I, I agree with him. But that in itself, uh, you cannot say that it's, it's difficult to be impartial or objective without autonomy. You have, to a large extent, the Constitution has given the judiciary enough uh, power to be able to regulate itself and. What has even the judiciary done about these corrupt officers that have been uh, indicted or have been found wanting? I remember vividly that the CGN summoned some um, judges of the High Court um, who are giving some kind of uh, conflicting judgment. And that was the last we heard about that. Have those, those that were invited have been uh, indicted, if they were indicted, have been punished? So, Yes, we need. We, we, there is need for the uh, for the judiciary to have its autonomy, which I still believe they do. Um, but um, with the power, little power they have, how well have they used it? Also, recently, don't forget that even the uh, um, the that was a bill that was passed, uh, giving a, a autonomy to uh, judicial workers. That they, they they went on strike for a very long time, and that was granted. How then has that also been implemented implemented in these various states? Um, by the state, various state governments and the rest of them. Um, autonom autonomy, well, agreed. But, 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 don't you, but don't you also think that there's an issue where, of course, you know that the appointment of, uh, you know, uh, the judges or the chief justice of Nigeria, uh, you, you still have the fact that it should be still, it's still done by the executive arm of government based on the recommendation of the NGC. So is, is, don't you think that that's entirely a problem that there should be given? And in terms of, you know, finances as well. And you know how powerful money can be, uh, you know, with anything that we do in the system. I agree with you uh, perfectly. And don't forget also, not just the, uh, when you said there's a, yes, um, the, before there's an appointment of a, a CJN or any higher officer, recommendation come from, uh, from agency, sent to the president. President um, picks somebody, then approval also goes to. Don't forget that the uh, the National Assembly also will confirm. It's, so is it clear? What I think that uh, we should be looking at is that for the judiciary, as it were, to push for amendment of um, of that part of the constitution which gives the the executive the power, and it's not within the executive. It's, it is now a judiciary legislative matter. Because if the judiciary can be able to push it, get the uh, legislature to be able to pass that or amend that, then the executive have no uh, part uh, in, in doing that. But until that session of the law is amended by the legislation, that the, the executive will continue to do what they are doing. I also agree with uh, um, uh, autonomy in, in, in terms of uh, monetary value. That, but don't also forget that. Let us also not forget that. The judiciary is also uh, the first uh, uh, line uh, within the first line uh, in, in payment when it comes to like um, that, what happens in the legislature. 
the National Assembly don't depend on the executive for its money. So if the judiciary can also push for that, most often than not, the, the, the National Assembly votes its own funds and it has it, it doesn't have to wait for the president to approve the payment, um, name, them, name it at any given point in time for them to get their money. The same thing should happen within the judiciary. So I think that what we should be looking at is a holistic uh, look at the legislative or, or the, the, uh, the law uh, setting up some of this stuff so that it can be amended to give the judiciary the much power that it is. But my own, I still believe that presently as it's where the judiciary still have enough power to be able to execute most of the things, but they should also look inward at some of the officers who are not living up to expectation. That is just my own thinking. All right. Um, on the um, Daily Trust this morning, there's a story there. It says uh, troops kill 50 ISWAP fighters in Brno as bandits execute 15 persons in Sokoto and, and uh, attack Zamfara village for failing to pay levy. Yes, um, good one. Uh, but do we have to wait for the execution or killing of a general of the Nigerian Army party, um, the military to uh, kill as many as 150 ISWAP uh, and Boko Haram fighters in, in Bono? Uh, that killing is a killing too many. Uh, the life of a general or every single Nigerian soldier matters to us. And that is where we think that this fight is, is just stretching more than we expected. We, we expected by now that the military would have wrapped up um, with this uh, insurgency and be able to um, break, uh, break this to a minimum of bets. Look at what uh, even the story we are coming that's coming at us, I think, from the Niger State or so that. Uh, the bandits or whatever you name them have taken over about two so so many towns in Niger State. Niger State is too close to Abuja, and we have seen what is even happening in Abuja, where bandits or terrorists, as I decide to call them, are raiding um, uh, homes and they even attack um, uh, the University of uh, Abuja, where they have daughters starting uh, some lecturers and rest of them. What I still think is that we should be able to do the needful, and good enough. We have um, at least some kind of, um, um, we'll be able to up the antics with the purchase of the Tucano um, uh, helicopters, which is helping the fight against uh, insurgency. But don't forget that also, a few days ago, um, Senator uh, Aline Dume came out to say that ISWAP is regrouping within the Lake Chad um, uh, region, and that in itself is a very big challenge. So but let's continue to take this fight to them and not wait for them to uh, take it to be our troop. The killing of that Brigadier General a few days ago to me is a very, very terrible one. And uh, we cannot continue to lose our best officers to this uh, mad set of people. All right. Uh, let's talk about uh, the inflation rate. Uh, the Guardian says inflation decelerates and defies market reality. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, grammar. In as much as it's not make any part, uh, <laughs> it's not make any part in the pocket of uh, uh, of average Nigeria and the prices of my sister you're laughing. And it's a part. If, if it's not make any part in the uh, in the in the pocket of average Nigeria, then we are having a lot of talent. I, I saw somewhere we one of the papers where I say that inflation has gone down by 15 percent. The rest of them, Lori Iro. Uh, as we say, because the prices of goods and services is skyrocketing and it's affecting every aspect of Nigerian life. Nigerians are finding it difficult to feed presence as it were. And that in itself is the challenge for me. We, what we need to do is to be able to make sure that um, Nigerians have enough in their pocket, they have enough food to eat and rest. In those days, it used to be, we used to talk about the 101 ratio. Now, the 101 is becoming very difficult for average Nigerians to pay. And that in itself is a problem. And this security problem we have is not even helping matters at all because fans are not going to the farm. When they get to the farm, they get killed. They get killed. Now they get, um, it, it, they just get, get killed. So people are not even going to farm to grow um, food. And that in itself is having a big challenge for me. And that is where it, it gets me worried. When I see the president um, flying all over the world and looking at uh, foreign investments, and, and the rest of them. He was in he was in UK recently. He was in Glasgow. He went to France from France. He went to uh, South Africa, and uh, he will be back in front and looking at foreign investment. But if you don't have the basic infrastructure on ground, nobody will come and invest under this economy. The, our greatest problem is that of insecurity. But also look at also the challenges of the basic infrastructure. No good road. Electricity is not there. On the all the SMEs are dying. 
practically, where I stay, I've not had light for close to how many days now? For about four, five days. So how will a, 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 an investor come to into such an economy where he knows that he will find serious challenges? Then also, most of our economic policies, we are moving from left, right, center, and rest of them without any specific economic policy in place. That in itself will never attract any, any sensible investor into our economy. So what we need to do is to let us focus on the basic challenges that we have and make sure that government is held accountable. And all the promises made to the to, uh, to the people are fulfilled. We've had so many promises in 2015 when this government was coming to power. I don't see any of them that they have been able to uh, achieve. And they just have barely two years to go. So but back to inflation, we're going to have that. Look at the banks are now going, uh, one of the papers also talking about banks now going to borrow a foreign is going to borrow dollars from foreign markets and the rest of them. How, how, how do you explain that? This is where really we are in real deep. And when I see people coming up with this because oh, inflation has reduced and the rest of this, I say if it does not affect my pocket, I don't believe anything. All those things are just mere figures for me. Yeah. All right. Chris Wanda, thank you very much. Uh, we're out of time for off the press. Thank you for your time and for speaking with us this morning. We wish you a very interesting and beautiful Tuesday ahead. Thank you very much for having me. Have a best. Absolutely. Thank you for coming, Paul. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll be sharing with you a little bit of what happened today in history, um, maybe a couple of years ago, maybe recently. We'll talk about it when we come back. Stay with us.